Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Connecting Dots podcast. As usual I'm your host Osama and today we've been joined by Heba all the way from California. Uh she's an aspiring data data analyst and she's also a professor at Sofia University. Now that uh, she has transitioned from being a student to now being a professor, so we'll talk talk to her about uh how things look like when she's on the other side of the table. So with that I formally welcome you Heba. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. How's your weekend going? Uh so Yeah, so far so good. I mean, uh, I'm a little sick, but it's okay. COVID negative. <laughs> yeah, I'll get well soon. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, so with that, let's get started. Uh, first of all, Hiba, uh, give us an elevator pitch about your professional journey. How has it been? And honestly, how does it feel like being a professor now? <laughs> okay, so um, journey, yeah, it's like a roller coaster. I graduated back in um, 2012 uh, from Pass University, Islamabad. um mm-hmm. and then i was a quality assurance analyst uh, in pakistan then i was a technical writer so there is like m- different roles in pakistan i worked for 5 years and especially for startups but then in mm-hmm. 2017 um i got married in 2018 i moved here in us um yeah. i'm uh, mm-hmm. currently living in california so over mm-hmm. here i'm i was actually thinking to be on a specific role where i i would stay you know Mm-hmm. Th- that was my thought process it took me around one and a half year and then i started yeah. my yeah. masters uh there mm-hmm. i found that uh, i really like data sciences so i shift to a data science concentration program for my masters which was uh, i was currently doing um okay. eventually i landed on data, data analyst uh, mm-hmm. uh you know role my uh, my mind yeah. would landed over there So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, that's my journey. Uh, then, uh, fortunately, my uh, university uh, consultant, he really liked my uh, project, my final year project, which which is called Capstone. And then he, they offered me a visiting faculty role uh, as a lecturer in the university. So that's my role. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. So I mean, um, how do you like being a professor right now? To be honest, it's um, mm-hmm. it's. uh in the start it was difficult like when you are a student mm-hmm. you don't realize that the other side is really tough uh because yeah. um, um i was also telling to a friend that uh when we are on this side it we have leverage to you know zone out anytime if we yeah. have like for example <laughs> it's a hybrid uh, these days it's a yeah. hybrid pattern like where we uh, we have to go once a month and um my class is around 6 hours So if I would be a student oh, I'm like wow. yeah I can yeah. zone out and come back and yeah. zone out and come back but being a yeah. teacher uh, or a lecturer over mm. here it's like I ca- I don't have a leverage to zone out and then mm. another responsibility is you know your mm-hmm. students should not zone out that means your your uh, material yeah. is not interesting and you have to yeah. you know um keep making something for them to you know to to indulge in the course so yeah, i think dif- it's difficult mm-hmm. right so considering if we consider the timeline so from the time when we've graduated to now that you were you were in another phase of life mm-hmm. so right now how do you think uh, p- or people or i should rather say specifically instructors should leverage technology to deliver their content to students uh technology i would um uh, technology you mean how to convey the lecture or uh, the technology already in the market how they use it i was thinking about uh how to make our lectures more interesting okay. and more captivating for students so that they are inspired to go and learn more in that field yes uh, uh perfect question so that's what i'm doing i'm trying to uh, use the practices used in the like in the market so for example if they are interested in um for example i'm t- currently i'm teaching data visualization course so mm-hmm. I- i'll give you an example and you'll get to know uh, it better right um okay. so in my first class when i went to the class um i had prepared my whole lecture for 6 hours um, around data excel and the mm-hmm. um and the um and my thought process was because when i was t- i was taking classes there, there were a lot of people who were not very tech uh like they did not tech have savvy, yeah? yeah exactly yeah. they did not have a tech strong tech background so mm-hmm. i'm like let's start with the very basics and then maybe i'll move towards i'll see the uh, behavior of the student then i'll move towards something else uh to right. be honest that was actually shocking for me when i went to the class yeah. and the uh-huh. like na- that was my first class with them and then my 98% uh class strength and the class was for 40 students 
percent was the yeah. core tech perks people and for mm-hmm. my first mm-hmm. class i realized that excel is not for them so i started building um, class assignments on the run time i had few mm-hmm. but you know when when there's a tech person they already know everything where you don't have yeah. to uh, explain then they you of are course. saving time yeah. so my 6 hour mm-hmm. lecture turned to be 3 hour lecture so i currently like mm-hmm. on the run i started making their class assignments so in um, and then for next and then uh, after class i keep asking them so it's like a survey but not uh, mm-hmm. on paper so i keep asking them yeah. uh, in the break i i went with them i talked with them like okay what are you interested in and after mm-hmm. class i send them an email like what you guys are interested in i can i can do this 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 so i um, mm-hmm. ask them it's it's a tool for example in data visualization tableau is a very hit tool so i mm-hmm. ask them do you know tableau and do you want to go with tableau they like um, yeah and then i asked them if you if you want more complex thing we can go for coding and mostly mm-hmm. people wanted to go like toward coding so from this yeah. that where i started very basic for the next mm-hmm. class i started yeah uh, teaching the whole lecture data visualization mm-hmm. uh using mm-hmm. python like cbon library so it started from here and then here yeah. so you have to keep nice. yeah. keep up the pace with uh yeah. what uh students are evolving with the technology mm-hmm. what they want otherwise they will be zoned out um so heba extending this thought a little further uh now that we get to hear a lot of buzzwords in the market mm-hmm. that there's um there's someone who's a data analyst there's data science uh data scientist yeah. uh there is uh, uh data data engineer yeah. um uh, per se so what are the, the the what are the differences between these buzzwords like what do these people actually do okay so i was very confused <laughs> you know when when going through that so sometimes i'm like okay yeah. is it data science type like the role should be data science or data analysis because mm-hmm. to be honest it's, it's a new role as compared to other roles yeah. it's it's a new mm-hmm. role so um some companies are also uh, putting data science name under data sci- analyst positions mm-hmm. so it depends on mm-hmm. company to company first of all uh, yeah. secondly let me explain with an example like data scientist and data analyst are the people who are consuming data and data mm-hmm. engineer is a person who is uh, giving the good data they are making every pipeline okay. and everything like behind the scene they are handling the data and in the front mm-hmm. view data scientist and data analyst so data scientist is the person who predict data Mm-hmm. for the like for the future what uh, what will be the pattern yeah. in in like coming year or or something like that mm-hmm. data analyst is the one who is showing you the current data like for example mm-hmm. we, we we can ask them like uh, okay uh, show us the column xyz mm-hmm. so that would be data analyst so that's the role okay. data analyst and data scientist is the front face and data engineer is the person who is responsible to get the accountable data for these two roles right so so if i'm understanding it correctly if the people who are consuming the data mm-hmm. um is that data typically unstructured or does that need to be filtered and sorted before it can it can be used in a meaningful way yeah it 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 should be um it have to be in a structured form so they can use it of course there are like different uh, scenarios and um um like um like scenarios and roles where you have to use it sometimes data scientists have it depends on the job to job also if you are in mm-hmm. a startup the data scientist is doing everything okay so they demand <laughs> like this but um, <laughs> on papers and on if I, yeah. if we google it or something the role defines for data mm-hmm. engineer is the one who clean it who get the data uh, clean it mm-hmm. make it in a form that data analyst or data scientist can use it right and heba in order to build a strong competency and foundation in the field of data science mm-hmm. uh, what what would you recommend to be a uh, a sound path for someone to learn and you know gain that competency very good question because last two years i did the yeah. same thing read about it so okay. i think that's a perfect question yeah. um yeah. Uh, for a data scientist i would say just start with the basic um uh, sql python um mm-hmm. and then r people like if you are if okay. you are good with python just go with python good with mm-hmm. r just go with r and then okay. keep reading on that uh keep, do projects so uh, i was telling a friend who is entering this field uh, uh, last week that the good thing is like 
being a new person to any field you get bored yeah. bored and scared mm. so for mm. me i thought i am bored but actually i was scared to pick any project and do it yeah. so now we are living in a um, in a very fast paced uh, era where we can go to youtube and go to yeah. a project where the solution is available for your first project yeah. you start doing it yeah. so if you know the solution is there you will know the pattern of doing it do it once or twice like do the projects uh, i'm mm. not saying pick a project which doesn't have it does not have any solution just pick a project mm. which is there just may make it and you'll yeah. find a lot of problems in that and you'll solve it and step by step your confidence will be built and then there are books also um to build mm -hmm. a project go with that also right interesting um so i want to circle back to the point where when you mentioned that you had like a six hour lectures but that got reduced to three hours uh but in your opinion would you not think that a three hour lecture would be better in terms of retention of audience and as well as giving them mean like maybe having two of these lectures and giving them assignments like relevant assignments would be better like how what's your take on this so i totally get that um um three hours lectures is enough that's the attention span you you can have but the thing with our, our system like over here in the university they just have once a month uh, because people are all also traveling for some from other states also so they mm -hmm. can't travel twice a month uh, for for a class uh -huh. so they okay. uh, yeah so okay. that's the issue but what i do is like it's a three hours uh, if it is, it's a six hours uh, lecture i keep uh, you know uh, giving them class assignments so in my regular class there are four to five yeah. class assignments so like these are the mm -hmm. small class assignment we i teach them and then we we do the mm -hmm. class assignment and then we take a break we refresh back right. we bounce back and then there's the time where we chit chat and then another lecture class assignment and then yeah. break so i think it like it in in a way that uh, if i will be on the other side i would be very bored like i can't take it my attention yeah. span is very uh, low like it depends yeah. of person to person so i have to yeah. cater everybody over there so i think for me i think that yeah. i am the lowest person because my attention span is uh, very uh, low so i have to think mm -hmm. like that right so heba do you have any cool traditions at work considering the faculty members at the university uh, so this is my first hybrid class this semester before that mm -hmm. we were doing uh, uh, remotely but what i was thinking that maybe uh, for my last class i i might take some sweets for for the students or coffee yeah, yeah it depends that's that's what i'm thinking right now because it's next sunday and i'm i'm still thinking i was asking my friends what should i do <laughs> <laughs> no that's interesting because i mean i remember from the time when we were at fast yeah. we were greeted with a quiz in the first class <laughs> Oh my god. So the coffee is definitely better than Yeah, that. yeah. No, yeah, first class no. I think uh, I just start uh, try to, you know, uh, yeah. for me I'm uh, I think that uh, if I talk with them on a on a break that would be a good thing. So for in that perspective yeah. I I go in the cafeteria, I talk with them, I indulge with them. I ask them about yeah. what they want are looking uh, into uh, into this course. what they want from it and uh, how how so my thing is i ask a lot of uh, reassurance that uh, okay how how i'm doing and uh, do you need anything else uh, what should i do to make yeah. it uh, you know better because i think in it's it's better to ask in um, in informal way um so mm -hmm. they don't have to you know put some words or they like you know how you send them questionnaire yeah. and half of students they don't fill it out because of course it's yeah, not yeah, mandatory exactly. it's for your own yeah. it's for teacher yeah. right or the person who is doing it yeah. um so i think if i go and yeah. talk to them in cafeteria in a very informal it's mm -hmm. not like tell me yeah i mean as far as the they can feel safe yeah, about it i exactly. think it, it's good to get that feedback on how can we yeah improve. exactly yeah that's what i do <laughs> Right, interesting. Uh so Heba in your experience again, uh how do you think uh, academia is keeping up with the with the changing trends in the industry? I mean, if we talk specifically about curriculum, mm -hmm. uh do you think that um in these modern times uh, curriculum is getting updated as fast as industry is evolving as well? You know, it should. It should updated, but it's unfortunately uh it's not in that manner like it's updated from 
from mm-hmm. the time period when we graduated i graduated like yeah. long way back yeah. so but it should yeah. be a little faster uh, but you know mm-hmm. i i have seen um, a lot of universities started doing uh, workshops where they invite people from the um, industry mm-hmm. and then they give a workshop uh, uh, with regard to that course yeah. or the tool they can use mm-hmm. i think that's a good practice first of all uh, they also used yeah. to do it in uh, pakistan when we were in fast um but i think uh, there should be it should be more like what's what's going on in the industry it should not be like uh, if i know r then i'm teaching r to the class there are yeah. there will be a lot of mm-hmm. students who are okay we don't want r so ask mm-hmm. for the majority option and then pick it up and then go from there um i yeah. uh, like i i want to give my example and on the student side also if you want to learn just just go with the um um blogs also technology is moving so mm-hmm. fast you have to keep up up the pace for example i started with sql then i thought like mm-hmm. uh, okay let's move toward the analysis toward python and then i i read this buzzword tableau and i'm like okay like what's tableau yeah. then go with tableau and then there's the, yeah. I, uh, i was doing this freelance project and then i came to know about data studio and i'm like okay let's let's learn about data studio and it's not like that these things are totally different from each other uh, they are almost yeah. the same the you just if you know if you know one tool you you can use other tools also So I think you have to read on your side. Being a student, you have to read it. Uh, you don't expect mm-hmm. that, um, uh, like anywhere, the university will spoon feed you anything. They'll just yeah. give you the concept, yeah. and if you are coming back over to us, we will explain in mm-hmm. a in a very good detail, and we will go uh, beyond our limits to you know explain anything to you. Yeah, of course. And uh, honestly, it would be nice to have a teacher like you in the class who is <laughs> empathetic towards the students' needs as well. <laughs> Maybe because because I recently yeah. graduated, so I'm like, okay, like. Yeah. And for to, to be honest, yeah. um, I also yeah. find it um an opportunity for myself uh to learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's one course yeah. I I um taught for two semesters uh, that's capstone mm-hmm. because of which okay. i got the job yeah. um so yeah. capstone where the thing is like i don't bound my students to do um one project like mm-hmm. uh when i was doing it i didn't get the option to i just had to do one one project but when okay. uh, i have different yeah. students i like i tried to convince my uh, academia on the back side that let them do their project because the thing is if this is the project they have four months they'll uh, put a lot of effort in it and then they can show it on their resume and then they when mm-hmm. they will go for the market when they will explain it so they they have the interest to you know build it in a very luxury way and then 100%. they can explain it yeah um so yeah and i try to get involved with them even if i like for example i don't know java but if somebody is doing it mm-hmm. i i just get involved with it with the you know what the mind process how they are working for it and if i if i i, w- I was doing it how will i do it like in my head so yeah. what where i am missing it so it's also a very good learning process to be honest excellent yeah. excellent so other than that heba if i'm not mistaken you're based in santa yeah. clara right yeah. So how does it feel like to be living in the heart of where technology evolves? <laughs> How's life like in California? You know life is really good but um mm-hmm. it's too fast. It's too fast. Okay. When you like yeah. before that I lived in Pakistan in Islamabad. So when you yeah. go back home um I visit mm-hmm. every year and when I go back home it's mm-hmm. like I can breathe in. you know it's it's ah, everybody's yes, and yes. it's maybe it's made that way everybody is moving yeah. so fast like you don't get the time of ab- yeah. absorb anything and you have to keep up the right. pace to be honest otherwise Absolutely. you will be like pe- because um, they are downsizing then you are hiring and jobs and everybody is talking about jobs and tech and uh, that's mm-hmm. that's that's why i would say that you can't the the place where i'm living you can't be um behind any technology because there's always a yeah. talk about it exactly, and then exactly. yeah and then yeah. Uh, blogs and news yeah. is all about tech so it's fast it's right. really fast yeah. <laughs> nice interesting um so other than that talking to you as a techie um are there any conferences that 
you know, public can attend? Like any, any conferences or events happening over there? Yeah, so there are a lot of conferences going on. First of all, I would like to divide this into two parts, like uh, conferences mm -hmm. and then organization where you find your people. If you are new new over here, uh, for example, for me, I was new here and I, I, I was looking for women in tech. Uh, then I found this community Pakistani women in tech. Um, um, like I'm a part of it, yeah. the Silicon Valley. It's uh -huh. there. You, ju you don't need any membership. You just have to mm -hmm. show up for their events and then you find your crew and then, you know, the, you go, you have like a lot of imposter syndrome when, uh, when coming from another country and you are here and like, okay, I'm not getting Absolutely. a job. It takes courage. I yeah. know. And you find a lot yeah. of people like you. For me, uh, first year was really hard. I thought I, I know nothing. I, I, I was, it was hard for me to find a job. And then I found a lot mm -hmm. of people in the same boat. They boost your yeah. confidence. Uh, they celebrate you. Um, and the good part is when I go back to Pakistan, in Pakistan, these communities are also there. So like we were talking about FAST, Pakistani women uh -huh. uh, in computing has, a, I think, a volunteer, a whole vol bunch of volunteers in FAST. And then when you know people are in Valley and when uh, and people are in Pakistan, they, they are connected very well. And when I went, I, I talked with people over there. We have like... Um, mm -hmm. meetups in Pakistan also like whenever we go so yeah. people are like especially girls are not like what we used to be I didn't know anything about tech when I even when I was doing computer science from fast yeah. <laughs> and the bridge is burning yeah. because of um, yeah. people in uh, in the Silicon Valley because they are uh, sending the information to people okay this is a way that you can come to this uh, this side also and they ask like Right. from pakistan they ask you like uh, how should we apply for scholarship how should we get to this how should we go to this yeah, yeah. and these communities are yeah. all it's not just in us uh, like for example pakistani women in computing is also in germany they and they have like europe branch and yeah. in us they have different branch seattle then silicon valley um Hiba, other than that i want to ask you about your transition to motherhood if yeah. you don't mind me sure. asking i mean uh, you're young you're energetic and you're into tech so how are you coping up with the change in your life? Um, hmm. <laughs> Actually, um, everything started, uh, like, I think after my son was born, like before I was doing my master. Mm -hmm. So um, I graduated, my son, I graduated in September 2021 and my son was born in October 2021. So, oh, yeah, okay. so everything yeah. started together. Uh, like I got my job and uh, I started my first, this job in January uh 2022 mm -hmm. so i think from the beginning um uh, it started in a way that i started handling it very well and then of course uh, it's a great yeah. help from my husband also um we manage in a way that mm -hmm. uh you know both can get uh like what we are yeah. doing um and mm -hmm. to be honest by the end when uh when i go like when i'm taking a breathe when i'm breathing in and i'm resetting and when i go yeah. to my son it's like instant reset yeah. so i think it's a good way nice. also uh, yeah yeah that's pretty cool um heba do you believe in core values and if so what are some of the core values that you uphold in your life okay so before covid um i know covid like that time was a really bad time but that time also uh, this all pandemic time also i like it teaches for me it taught me a lot in a way that i become a very <clears throat> um, excuse me i'm i become a very uh, particular about my schedule yeah uh, and i ha now i started planning everything it's been like 2 years i i i can't get through my day without planning so for i would say that for core mm -hmm. value i would say planning growth mindset yeah you have to mm -hmm. uh, you have to be you know pick up the pace and go with it even if you are taking a, a, a small step but go with it so for me planning right. um growth mindset and if you are having any bad day it's okay just calm down and reset and bounce back um yeah. and for example yeah, sometimes yeah. you wake up and you are not feeling it's your day but if mm -hmm. you are ending it in a in a on a good note then that's yeah. fine that's your day even just right, one yeah, thing. Yeah, that, that's yeah. pretty, you know, 
that's a positive message <laughs> i would say nonetheless yeah nice so heba i want to talk to you about um the hashtag i am remarkable mm-hmm. initiative so how did that happen for you that's great i'm uh, unfortunately currently i'm not uh, conducting any workshops but uh, mm-hmm. uh, but in future i'll get the training again mm-hmm. so i am remarkable is a <clears throat> google initiative um, and it's for women and underrepresented uh, people um, they they conduct well- workshops yeah. so uh, fun mm-hmm. thing is that uh, first time i came to know about this terminology imposter syndrome in the one of their yeah. workshop before that i didn't know i know the feeling but i did not know there's a word coined yeah. word or maybe you didn't have it at all i i had it <laughs> I, i had it <laughs> yeah okay, but okay. but you know in every um, in yeah. every workshop um, so i i actually mm-hmm. attended Uh, many workshops and i was like okay i want to celebrate other people also and uh, then we i st- get the training and then i started giving workshop so they celebrate you yeah, they tell you like the small things which uh, which we sometimes don't notice like okay we are doing this also in our day but we are like okay yeah. we haven't done that thing in our in our day right so i mean i mean how did it start for you so uh, there was this community pakistani women in computing they conducted this one of the um, workshop uh, and then i uh-huh, came to know okay. about this oh i'm remarkable um, is uh, is a thing and then uh, in our pakistani women in computing they some i asked somebody and she was like okay you have to take this training and then you have to give uh, i think two or three workshops for that then you become the facilitator yeah. of that uh, i'm remarkable and then you can conduct it right so first you have to get the training yeah. um, you can go to i am remark you just google it i am remarkable and then uh, they will give yeah. you the training you g- pick a date uh, you they'll give you a training and then you have to conduct two or three workshops then you become the right. uh, facilitator yeah. nice yeah no i'm by the sounds of it it, it definitely feels like bibik is a um, is is a very is a community of very i would say energetic and passionate people and uh, I, you know more power to them and i hope they keep doing the positive work and maybe <laughs> they should they should open a uh, an ottawa chapter over here in canada as well <laughs> i i have to check i think but yeah. we have like i think yeah. they have one in uh, toronto <laughs> it must yeah. be yeah 100% okay. yeah cuz it's uh, it's definitely a bigger city so must yeah. be yeah uh so now that we are heading towards the closure of our uh, of our conversation heba um I would close close it off on this note that um, in your journey and experience right now, do do you think you would have done anything differently? I think with the same circumstances, no. Right now, where I am, I have I have actually took baby steps, uh, and I I have worked for yeah. it, and Alhamdulillah, I'm I'm in a yeah. position. I think I would haven't done anything. Maybe, uh, yeah. start like if one thing, maybe start taking uh interest in technology away earlier. Yeah, nice. And also, uh, it just uh, ran through my mind that you're uh, you're also running a podcast as yes. well. Yes. What's your long term vision with that? Uh, I have to think about that. Uh, but I'm I got very impressed by your uh, you know, your planning and everything. Your podcast. Uh, maybe I'll record oh, right now. You. No, no, thank it's you. it's it's planned <laughs> ahead. But I I was just thinking when I was going through your process. I'm like, okay, I have to plan it and do it properly because you know when you are doing a lot of stuff and then I sometimes I keep it in a, a back burner. But no, I'll, I'll I'll you are a motivation for me. I'll work for it and then oh, maybe. You. for next time I'll, i'll i'll have this answer yeah nimra if you're listening uh, i'm pretty sure you are <laughs> big shout out to you for being the motivation for this podcast and um, thank you for for uh, you know being a very active part of this initiative anyways thank you so much hiba it was really nice talking to you um, and more power to you i hope you get to cherish a lot of beautiful memories with your family as well um, as far as our listeners are concerned if you like the content please feel free to like share and subscribe and show your support and uh, you know uh, before the next episode rolls out do check us out on other uh, streaming platforms and uh, by the next episode take care of yourself and see you soon